Hi, I'm Carol Kane for On Milwaukee, and I'm here with my dear friend Jane, and we're going to talk about an issue that really is right at the forefront at this particular juncture. I want to say that her official name is Jane. That yes. happened just recently, right? Yes. It became legal. Two days ago. So Jane, I want to ask you, you are transgender, yes. and I want to ask you about your journey. How did we get to this point? It started way back when I was little. Uh, as early as five, six years old, I realized I was different from everybody else. You know, I didn't really fit in with the boys. I liked the things that the girls did. I liked the girls' clothes. But back in my day, there wasn't the internet or any books, so it made my childhood really confusing. Um, but as I got older, I started to learn more, um, especially probably in my 30s and 40s when you know, the internet came in big and I found a, a great group of friends up in Minnesota and they brought me up there one weekend to a drag queen show and there were 22 other girls just like me there. It's to the point where it consumes you. Where you just can't think of anything else but wanting to be a girl. You start with the people that are close to you, like your family members. When I first started coming out, my sister was the first person I told because I figured she would be on my side, and she was. Um, she's been a great ally in all of this, and she's also helped me tell the rest of the family. They don't all understand it. And I don't blame them. It's difficult to understand this. It's even hard for us sometimes. Uh huh. But all in all, I've had really good experiences, and now I've started coming out to friends, uh, former coworkers, and the support has been tremendous. I mean, I always felt on the inside and in my brain that I was a girl. But, you know, you just. You spend years and years and years um, compressing it, putting it away, not allowing it to come out, and doing all the macho guy stuff, and um, eventually it starts to catch up to you, or it starts affecting your health and your mental well-being. Uh, yeah, I was hiding out in the attic and putting on one of my mom's dresses, and my dad came up the steps and caught me. And, you know, he just looked at me and said, you must be crazy, and that was it. That's all he said. That's kind of what I thought I was. I thought I was crazy. There was nothing out there yeah. to explain why you were doing this. A lot of people turn to drugs and alcohol. I've got about 1980 to 1987. I was high from the time I woke up in the morning to the time I went to sleep, just trying to drown it out and escape it, but it didn't help. Um, the best way to describe what it's like to be transgender is that I do have a brain of a female. But unfortunately, I was born with male body parts, you know, and that just causes a ton of confusion. I guess, though, what I'm asking, too, is that the struggles of being gay are similar, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's denial. It's, you know, not uh, trying to believe that that's who you really are. You do everything you can to push it aside, but, you know, um, being gay and, and transgender, there's similarities, but there's also differences, you know. Gay men tend to shy away from transgender women. There are a few out there um, that will love you and accept you for who you are. Gay men will always be attracted to other gay men not necessarily transgender, there is a big difference between us. As of right now, I look at myself as asexual. I'm not really attracted to men or women. But I think some down, somewhere down the line, I would love to meet a guy who would treat me as me. You know. This group of girls, we call ourselves the Erie Girls, so we all met in Erie, Pennsylvania. They are more than just friends, they are family. These are the girls I lean on the most for support and and help, and they have been just tremendous friends. You are a truck driver? Yes. 18 wheeler? Yep. Tanker truck? Gas tank. Got it. For 28 years. And I just walked away from it because I couldn't do it anymore. Um, I, I like talking to people now. I never did, you know. I would just kind of go to my own little space and 
stay there. So yeah, there's been a big change that way. This is something you were born with, and it proves Caitlin struggled with it her whole life too. I think. Now she's living her life authentically. I mean, she has really brought being transgender to uh, the forefront. You know, that it can happen to anyone. So this is your daughter. That's my daughter. And Melissa. when was this picture taken? Um, about eight years ago at a Brewers game. Oh yeah, my daughter's behind me a thousand percent, so it's great to have her there. I'm still the same person. I still love to ride my Harley, except I am way more happier because I'm, I'm me. I'm who I've always been. I'm finally living myself. And there's still a lot of transgender people who are basically living on the streets because their families have shunned them completely. Where do we go from here now? We, we've, we, we're we dressing completely as Jane and we just wait another few months and hopefully we'll be able to afford the surgery and then... Yeah, just keep continuing to be me. I'm hoping in the not too distant future I will have my very own Hamburger Mary's franchise up in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. From Hamburger Mary's, I'm Carol Kane for On Milwaukee, here with my friend Jane. Thanks for joining us and visiting and talking about the topic of transgender.